Hi everyone, welcome to this Lightroom tutorial. Today we're going to go through um, a quick edit on a floral picture. Um, I've had quite a few people have sent me messages and emails from uh, primarily YouTube about the editing process on some of the work that's uh, been posted on my blog and website recently. So I figured it was easier just to do a video, uh, show people roughly my workflow as we go through for the floral pictures. Now I've got this basic file here. Uh, this is pretty much untouched. It's been reset back to default. And the first thing I'd always stress is, is when you're taking these pictures, have a look at the background. This out of focus area that's at the back is the area that's probably one of the most important factors when you're, you're taking detail shots like this. Obviously what you don't want is things that detract from it too much so you don't want bits of blown out sky in the background or really dark woody colours um, you want to keep it as, as bright and as vibrant as you can so try and keep you know flowers and greenery as your base for your out of focus areas so let's get straight into it first thing is the colour temperature now you do want to keep this on the warm side this by default has is, is come at 5900 which is quite a good colour to be perfectly honest um, I'm just going to tweak that up a little bit to the 6000. Again, the tint is is pretty good. I mean, it depends on your taste, really. But um, I'm just going to shift that up from the 14 to around about the 20 mark. The other thing with these type of pictures is you have to remember that everybody wants to envisage seeing these plants or um, floral displays they want to imagine that they're being captured on a bright sunny day which is what most people associate with flowers so you want to keep these pretty bright so I'm just gonna push the exposure up to the extreme really up to about say 1.2 now I'm going to use the highlights to see how much that I can recover now I'm going to just drop down to the whites I'm going to press my alt key and I'm going to drag this back just so I can't see any um, blue markings to show me that we haven't got any burnt out areas and with the blacks I'm going to move this back down just till I start to see the blacks coming through so I've got a reasonable white point now the contrast I'm going to put up to generally somewhere between 10 and 15 I'm just going to bring that exposure down ever so slightly. Clarity with things like this, I'm always going to probably go for around about 25. Now, vibrancy. This is the thing we need to push up quite a lot to make the the picture really pop and make it really vivid. You can get away with it with the plant pictures. Um, you can't with most things, but flowers. Um, you can get away with pretty ridiculous amounts of vibrancy but we're going to put this up to around about the 21-22 mark something like that now the saturation I am going to push up a little bit as well what I'm trying to do is get this yellow area in the background to stand out a little bit more I'll set my length correction down there. And the other thing I do, I'm going to have some noise reduction now. My go to figure is usually around about 30. And sharpening, I'm going to move up to around about the 50 mark, which is my general sort of vicinity. And I'm going to press the Alt key and slide the masking detail across. So we're only sharpening what you see in white on the picture, not what's in black. So I'm just going to move this down to we're only sharpening pretty much the area that we're concentrating on in the picture. Now I'm going to go to the crop box and where it says original I'm going to change that to one by one ratio. And I'm going to use the grid lines here and place it on one of these third lines. That looks good to me. I'll just press return to accept that. One last thing I'm going to do here is go down to add a slight vignette. Vignettes uh, for me are generally between 
15 and 24, 25. Um, but I would say more often than not, I'm sort of like 18, 19, especially on the brighter pictures. You don't want to take things down too much. Now we've done all that, we're just going to nip back up to that exposure and see if we can just crank it back up again a little bit. I'm just going to grab that white slider and just drag it down a little bit more. And I think we're good at that. So if we just nip back and have a look at what we started with, which was this picture, and we've gone from that to this. So you can see a, a few short steps can uh, bring you quite a long way. Excuse me, it's just stacked my image again. So this was the before, and this was the after. Before, after. Now you don't have to go quite as vivid as I has done with this. To be quite honest, I've, I've probably pushed this a little bit further than I ordinarily would, um, just to make sure they actually come across on the video, because sometimes it, um, the effects that you do don't come across very well on video, so sometimes you have to overcook them ever so slightly just so it's more obvious to you when you're viewing the video. So once again, before and after, and all we've really done is is we've moved the colour temperature up and the tint up ever so slightly to make it a little bit warmer. We've picked the exposure up, added contrast, brought the highlights down to compensate for what we put on the exposure. We haven't really played with the shadows, I mean we could in reality see if we can open those up a little bit. But again, it's down to personal preference and taste. Whites and blacks, we've used the Alt key, depress while we're moving these. Clarity, we've had for micro contrast. Vibrancy, and saturation, we've tweaked to get it as vivid and as colourful as we can. Down the bottom here, sharpening at 50. How we've used the masking just to be sure it's only applying that little bit of sharpening to this flower at the front and we've added a little bit of noise reduction and our lens profile corrections. And then we did a crop using the crop tool at a one for one ratio to make us a nice square crop. And there you have it. I hope you find this useful. What I will do is save this um, as a development setting and I'll put it available for download alongside the video if you're watching via the website and you have a membership. Thanks for watching. Till the next time. Bye for now.